Hi, my name is Emily Leone. I'm a Spanish teacher at Fairfield Ludlow High School. And today I would like to give you a tip on how to assess in an open-ended format um, in the interpretive mode. This is um, this open-ended model is something we've been using in Fairfield Public Schools at both the high school level and um, at the middle school level in the World Language Department. Um, I just presented this at ACTful a few weeks ago, and I got great feedback, so I'd love to share it with you. Okay, the, how this came about, this open-ended format, was during hybrid learning, we needed a way to assess the students in the interpretive mode, and it was difficult with students at home, on the computer, as well as in front of us in the classroom, and the former multiple choice format just did not allow for academic integrity. So that's how this open-ended format came about. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. The students in the open-ended model, as you see, provide the keywords, okay? So this would also be using, of course, authentic resources. And there's a rubric which um, corresponds to the actful can-do statements. So, the one, this template that we're looking at is for levels intermediate and above, intermediate, mid, and above. So the students provide keywords, words that are key to understanding in both the target language and English. They provide supporting details, five specific key details um, that support the main idea. They do that in the target language. And then the main idea, which is also in the target language, um, in this box, there's who, what, where, uh, when and why, what's the purpose of the video, and then they form their sentence in the target language, and then there's an application question that we use for inference. Um, now, the students in intermediate low and below levels, they do um, this in English, and there's no application question currently for those levels. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go over what the pros and cons of this are. So the pros of the open-ended format are that it's scaffolded, so students build on their keywords to get details. The details help them form the main idea and the application question. Students have a choice and they can show what they understand, um, builds confidence. Students read and listen to the entire text instead of just reading and listening to the parts that answer the question, um, so you don't have an issue with that text matching. Um, and then, of course, for intermediate, mid, and above, using the target language more enhances the student's ability to express themselves. The pros for teachers are there's no need to create questions every time you find a new text or a new audio. It saves time. Um, the ability to give meaningful, actionable feedback. And also, students can show a deeper understanding than just showing an understanding of isolated facts. Um, so in support of the use of a non-multiple choice format from the common ground, second language acquisition theory goes into the classroom. So a lot of times we form questions that the students simply have to look for the answers in the text and they really don't understand it. So ensuring that learners are not merely text matching, um, where learners scan the text searching for specific words from the questions, if they're forming their own details, there's no need to worry about that. Um, this is just an example I used, um, actful of if we read this, it's kind of nonsense, but we can still answer the question. Um, however, it doesn't really show our understanding of the text because we can answer this, but we have no clue what it means. Okay. Also with using, um, when we have them use English, um, we might give the wrong impression that we want them to translate the text, and that's not what we want them to do. We don't want them to translate. We want them to show an understanding. So that's why for intermediate, mid, and above, they have enough language that they should be able to write it, paraphrase in the target language. Okay, this would be an example of the main idea, who, what, where, when, why. The why would be the purpose of the article or the text. So, and then there's some strategies to support learning, student learning with this open-ended model. You can break the text into smaller units, 
Have students make predictions based on the title? Have students work in groups to come up with keywords, details, and main idea? Have groups put their responses in a pair deck, project answers to the class without names and go over them? Have learners listen and read once just to understand keywords? Listen or read again to write main ideas? And in groups, learners share with each other what they understood. They should read the text or listen to the text one or more times to confirm the main ideas and add supporting information. Then they can listen two more times for supporting details and an application question. So the only thing that I would like to improve on this is aligning the rubric to the proficiency levels, not just the can-do statements. And uh, so the resource I used was Common Ground by Henshawn Hawkins. And I hope that this provided you with another way to assess in the interpretive mode. Thank you for listening.